condition class is one of the simplest yet very important part of Java concurrency. So let's try to understand conceptually what is a condition class. Let's say we have a thread 1 which after doing certain operations it cannot move forward until a particular condition is met. This condition will be completely based on your use case. So in this case as soon as it cannot move forward until that condition is met it will call condition.await. As the name suggests, it says I'm just waiting for this condition to happen. The thread will immediately go to the wait state, that is a block state. Suppose there is a thread 2, which after doing some certain operations, which were required for this condition to be fulfilled, signals for that condition. In simple terms, it means that I have completed all the operations that are required for this condition to be successful. Please signal any of the threads which are waiting for this condition to happen. As soon as the signal method is called, the JVM will find all the threads which are in the wait state waiting for this condition and it will wake them up. So the state of this particular thread will go from the wait state to the runnable state. Let's look at it from a code perspective. Let's say we have two methods, method 1 and method 2. And of this method 1 is run by thread 1 while the method 2 is being run by thread 2. Both of these methods use the same lock. The type of this lock is reentrant lock. And we are creating a new condition out of this lock. The name of that variable of that condition is condition met. Both of these methods, both of these threads will initially acquire the lock and then trigger a certain method on the condition. So in this case, the thread 1 will say wait for this condition to be met. Okay, so read it reverse. It says I'm awaiting for this condition to be met. As soon as it does that, this particular thread will go into a wait state. So it will suspend at this point. Whenever thread 2 performs those certain operations which were required for that condition to be met, it will say condition met dot signal. It's saying that signal to any thread which is waiting on this condition. As soon as it does that, the JVM will take this thread out of the wait state and push it into the runnable state. Of course, this thread 2 does not have any other operations to be performed, so it will release the lock by calling dot lock dot unlock. And that is when it is possible for the thread 1 to reacquire this lock and then it is zoomed from the point from which it got suspended. So it doesn't have to restart its method. It will just resume from whatever point it got suspended before. So this is how two threads can coordinate with each other using a simple condition. Of course, this log.new condition can be called multiple times and then you can create different conditions based on your use case. If you have worked with Java's wait notify, you will find those things very similar. In Java wait notify, you have to call the wait method and the notify method only within the synchronized block. So in this case, we have this method called execute, which is synchronized. That means that only one thread at a time can enter this method. We can say monitor.wait. Monitor is nothing but a simple Java object. Remember that in Java, we have the object, which is the parent class of all the classes. And this object class has these three methods, wait, notify, and notify all. That means that you can use any object in Java as a monitor. So here, monitor can be any object. It can be a string, or it can be a new object, or it can be object instance of any other class and then whenever we want to notify we'll say monitor.notify and monitor.notify all so the place where we said synchronized in java's condition case we will have log.log .log. wherever that synchronized block is completed we are saying log.unlock so what this means is only one thread will be able to enter this block similarly only one thread will be able to acquire this lock and unlock wherever we're calling monitor.wait we'll call condition.wait both of these Throw an exception and that's why we have it as a try catch. In the places where we say monitor.notify, we are saying condition.signal, which means that it will wake up only one thread out of the many which can be waiting for that condition. If we want to wake up all the threads which are waiting on the condition, we can say notify all, and in case of condition, we can say signal all. So in terms of semantics, Java wait notify is exactly the same as Java condition. So let's expand a bit on when we spoke about having multiple threads waiting on the same condition. Let's say we have this thread 0 which is waiting for that condition by calling condition.await and after a certain point there is a thread 1, another thread which is doing the same. So at this point in time we have two threads, thread 0, thread 1, both part of the same wait set, both waiting for the same condition to happen. The thread 2 which is responsible for signal will call condition.signal all. This will make the JVM take out both these threads, thread 0 and thread 1 out of the wait state and put them into the runnable state and then based on how many cores your cpu has the jvm can choose to schedule those runnable threads at any point in time 
if instead of condition dot signal all if you had called only condition dot signal then it would have been thread zero only which would be taken out of the wait state and changed to runnable and the thread one would still be in the wait state waiting for that condition so when you say condition dot signal it means take out the first thread which was waiting the longest for that condition and then again if the thread says condition dot signal the second time there is only one thread waiting for the condition and it can come out of it so this is called a fairness the first in first out concept of the thread which is waiting for longest for the condition will come out first and that of course happens only if you call condition dot signal if you say condition dot signal all all the threads waiting for that condition will change from wait state to the runnable state there is one more caveat when you want to use this condition class you should use the condition dot await method within the while loop for a predicate so let's say we have this code a consume method which is called by a consumer thread and as the name suggests it's trying to consume some data if the count is zero there is nothing to be consumed and that's when we say await for the signal that some data is being added now ideally we would want to just say if count equal to equal to zero then do condition dot await but there is a concept called spurious wakeups where thread which is in the await state can come out of it at any time even if no one has signaled it and that is why it is important to do this into a while loop because in this case even though there is was a spurious wake up that no one called signal you could since this is in a while loop it will again go into the while it will check the count is zero and it will again go into the wait state and that's how we can take care of spurious wake ups and finally the brilliance of this class is best understood when we look at the producer consumer problem so in this case we have a single lock of type reentrant lock we have two conditions added and removed added signifies that some data was added and removed signifies that some data is being removed one is the produce method of course the producer thread will run this and we have a consumer method where the consumer thread will run this when the consumer method first comes in it will say the count is zero because nothing is added and that's when it will await for this condition that someone has added the data when the producer adds the data it will say added dot signal and that's when the consumer thread can move forward there can be a scenario where the consumer has not started or maybe the consumer is very very slow so in that case the amount of maximum data that you can put say in a queue for example is crossed so the producer is too fast and after a point in time it cannot continue adding more data so if the count is maximum you cannot do anything else then the producer also can say wait for the consumer to remove that data so here it says remove or await so whenever the consumer gets that data it can say okay i'm signaling for anyone who is waiting on this condition removed that means there is at least one data slot available for the producer to push the data and this is how using only two simple object conditions we can create an entire producer consumer that's all there is to java's condition class simple and yet very powerful thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye